Hello viewers of Travel TV channel. It's another edition of your program Bushfola travel without borders but you have to travel through the right channels you have to make sure you're traveling for the right purpose today i'm not alone i have my guests on set and we'll be talking about a very exciting a topic employment that's what we'll be discussing we know that when, most often when we hear about bush followers it's about going abroad to hustle hustle what job what kind of jobs and today we'll be meeting my guests right away and by my left i am with uh kenneth i love to call him ken Welcome to the show. Again, I'm Kenneth. I'm a culture counselor. I have a GPS company, GPS tracking, video surveillance, um, and a bunch of other small things that we do. We we'll keep the hustling going on. And we're going to have a bunch of stuff to talk about on the program. And by my right, right hand, I'm with Lawrence. Lawrence, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lionel. My name is Lawrence, Lawrence Liku Asu. My primary career is in telecom. I have telecom gadgets that I supply to my customers. So basically, I'm into everything that that's what keeps me going to order. And we had done something with Lawrence behind the scenes. You know, he has yeah. lived abroad for more than 10 years. We did a mini documentary with him. Let's all watch and we'll be right back. Uh, since I returned back to Kamei, it's been um, a very tough experience for me, but also it's been something that uh, I enjoy because I've got to meet a lot of friends, a lot of people that I left back when I travel. Since I came back, since I over in the United States, I was primarily a telecom equipment installer. I used to travel a lot to install equipment for Verizon, Comcast, these are telecom equipment companies in the US. I thought I could do that here, but I started off with um, <coughs> opening cyber cafe shops just to get to know the terrain and get to master how everything works here. Back then it was booming. I mean, you, you, we had international calls, we had printing, and we had um, rental spaces for, for internet for customers who came to use internet and computers. And then we have other customers who consult us. I mean, especially me, uh, since I've had the experience of traveling and living in a, so I had consultation. Sometimes I'm called to help families to, to go through their process of immigration. For the most part right now, I do a lot with assisting um, with online applications. For example, like the American Embassy, you have full application online. My personal number is 674-869-862. That's 674-869-862. It's most of my clients over the years, they have that number. I meet them, they meet me, and then uh, we'll get the deal done. I have a lot of friends, uh, especially around Bonamusadi, Makepe neighborhood. And then um, I thought to myself I could have a small a uh, place, a relaxa relaxation place where we can maybe hang out with my friends and in the evening or after sports because I'm regular with sports on weekend. After sports we could go take a drink, eat something and then um, it's located right at Makepe. It's a eating and drinking relaxation place so that's what I do most part then we'll meet other places and have fun. <laughs> I play football. I am learning at my own age. If a tofis come to my rehearsal, he would dismiss me in an instant. But I try. <laughs> if you're just joining us, the show is Bush Fuller on Travel TV channel. And now we are getting to the crux of the matter, employment in the United States of America. If I'm getting into Georgia for the first time, mm -hmm. okay, and I want a job, how do I start? What are your qualifications and how old are you? I go back to the age because to get a job in the US, is, the economy is a lot more advanced. You can come in today and you get a job tomorrow, but what kind of job are you going to be doing? Okay, that's where the problem is. The herbs that are needed, you can walk at Walmart, you can walk at McDonald's, you have all these fast food places that you can basically walk in there the next day. First of all, let's not forget, you have to be qualified to have a job, which means but you have to respect the laws of every country to begin with. Are you eligible 
for employment. Okay. If you're not eligible for employment, then you can't just go get a job. Respect the laws of every country. That's the first thing I respect to advise people. But there are jobs available. What kind of job do you want? What kind of do jobs are available? Flip burgers for the rest of your life? Here's what I always try to tell people about jobs in the US. Family orientation, who you meet, let's say uh, a scenario where everybody is qualified to get a job. Okay. A young man comes to the US uh, or someone in their 30s or someone in their 40s. Family orientation is usually the first people, those are the first people who try to let you know what you need to do. They tell you based on their experiences that you know what, this is when I came here, this is what I did and this is what worked for me. That's always the same. But depending again on your age group, do you research before you go to the US? Find out what are your ambitions? What are you, I can help you tell you like in the short term and long term run, what you can do to improve on your income. Larry, uh, can, I want us to get back to this uh, long term and short term job opportunities Trust that are me, available it's very, later. very, very important to think, understand that part. Like yeah, but, but before, to before we get to that point, mm -hmm. I want to find out uh, from, from, from Lawrence, we know that uh, most people who go abroad to hustle for greener pastures are the pe persons that are not very qualified academically. Because you mostly find uh, maybe in Cameroon, if you have a first school living certificate and your family members have been able to maybe put some one, two million together or three million together and they say, okay, let's send the first son, firstborn of the house mm -hmm. abroad to go and hustle. I want to use the word hustle You're because right, right. there are persons that it's go to the United hustle. States of America to get um, to, for, to, to look for employment, but they go with high qualification and now they are not going to hustle but they have a particular job. Some of them have already done interviews online and they know the big jobs they are going to get in for. But in a situation where we have a, a young man with say maximum and ordinary level certificate who says, okay, rallies the family together, please put money together for me, let me go to the US to hustle. Mm -hmm. In Maryland, what are the kind of opportunities that we have for such person? Well, um, <clears throat> not every job by my experience need uh, too much qualification. Okay. Um, there is a broad range of Cameroonians who are doing regular things like we have here in Dwala. I have friends in Maryland who make soya, who have who own soya stands. I have friends in Maryland who have beer parlor. So if you have a young man, for instance, with no high qualification for a start, even if they don't have uh, papers but they need to survive, they can get help from one of these Cameroonians. You can even go to the kitchen and wash plates and then they pay you at the end of the day. Maybe a hundred dollars, maybe a fifty dollars to get yourself going. But for the most part, um, it's always advisable for you to, while you get in that hustle, that early stage, you look for something that you have to do in school because America is all about certification. You have to know what you want to do and get the certification for it. It can be a six month certification, it can be a one year certification. For most people, I mean, I'm talking from my own experience, for most people, if you're in a rush to get um, something quick, maybe to help your family, like you said, family has contributed a lot of money to send you down there. You don't, you didn't go there to snap the picture. Maybe the money coming back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I had a friend from Funga who used to tell me, I didn't come to America to snap picture. <laughs> because he works overtime like every day. So that's the spirit. So he's hustling, taking overtime, and doing all kind of shifts just to make ends meet. Okay. For him, certification is not that important right now. He could do that for maybe two, well, one year, two years, get the family sent them back home. So okay, those, Ken, are, those, those, are, those exactly are the short term. So, yes, short yes. term so, so, so term Ken, goals. can we say that getting a job in the US, say Georgia, where you've, you've lived, it's all about your dynamism? Let's go back to qualifications. Okay, uh, this is point I was trying to bring up uh, when Larry was talking. Uh, US has their own laws and certifications. You can be the most qualified doctor in Cameroon, mm -hmm. but you cannot be able, you won't be able to operate in the U.S. Okay. As a doctor. Or as, as a doctor. Or any doctor. You must, <laughs> as a lawyer, yeah. you must, they have like, as a nurse. My aunt was like the best midwife that I've ever known in Cameroon. <laughs> but when she went, when she went to the U.S., she was obliged. They told her, sorry, man, I know you have like 20 years of experience as but a you midwife. You have to go away. You have to take that certification. You have to pass the bar exam. So you have to go back to school. So it boils down to everybody, when you go to the US, you go this, you must have some kind of a training. 
before you can walk anywhere. They do orientations. I don't care if you're going to be flipping burgers. I go Ken, I want us to relate with Cameroonians. Okay. Cameroonians, average Cameroonians, because the truth is that most of the Cam most Cameroonians that live, uh, most Africans in general, who leave their home country to go abroad or to the U.S. to hustle, are not that qualified academically. And now, for such persons, I want us, I want you to speak directly to them. For such person, if they are getting into the U.S. for their first time and they, they, the intention was to go out there and hustle and send money home to their wives, to their kids, to their family members, what kind of job can they easily get? Is it a barber? Is it a, like a, a, a Lawrence talked about doing the soya barbecue? What are the job opportunities available for them out there? I want you to talk to them. No, let's talk about, uh, you said advanced level. Okay, that's a very good qualification. You can read, you can write. For the most part, you can do most jobs in the U.S. with an advanced level. You know, they ask you. So it's all about being a literate first. Being a literate for the most part. High school diploma, like they call it over there, is like a standard, which is good enough. That is recognized for like maybe most say, on skilled level and stuff like that. Okay. You can read instructions. You can do all that. You know. But here's the thing: I'm talking to young people. If you're traveling to the U.S., okay. If you're 18 or 19 and you're going to the U.S., I don't know what kind of visa you took. Maybe you took a visa going as a student, or maybe you took a visa just going to visit and you intend and you get there and your intention is that you want to extend your stay and all that. If you're 18 or 19 or 20 up to the 37, okay, you have to go back to school. There is no qualification. There is nothing you can do in the U.S. in the long term without going through their educational system. So it means basically Unless, the kind of jobs there's no available, options. No, available can, for short term. That's, that's, that's the second point I was trying to bring up also. We always make the mistake of going to the US. Like our minds have, um, our family have oriented us in such a way we only think about one day when we go to the US. Go to school, go to school and work for somebody. The, the biggest mistake people Lawrence, make is the fact that it. You yes. can start your own business, and that's one of the most, the best thing anyone can do. Yeah, like, it took like, a while before we realized that. Like, that's based on my experience. Yeah. Most Cameroonians now, they focus on having their own thing instead of working for somebody. What, uh, what are the kind of things that a Cameroonian can easily establish in a foreign land? I will land? tell you what I know for sure. I have guys I know in Maryland. This guy is a mechanic in Maryland. He's a... Um, how do you call it? On call mechanic, as they call it, on call. So everybody, most people have his number, and they call him, and he can uh, come to your house and walk for walk on your car. We have uh, plumbers. We have uh, plumbers who come in. You can just follow a young Cameroonian can just follow another guy for like two or three weeks or a couple of months and learn plumbing oh, okay. and start his own plumbing, uh, uh, plumbing uh, business. business, and do on call plumbing. Uh, we have. Uh, like I say, it's restaurant, restaurant is many, many, many Cameroonians who own restaurant and they, they, they own the business and they don't work for nobody. So you can, it's easy to start a business like that. We'll talk about starting a business, not necessarily a big time company. It's the little things that we do here, you can apply yourself and make money with it. The little things that we do here, because the services are, are so needed, yeah. can you I can make money. To yeah, sure, feel free. First of all, the only country I know in this world where everyone is proud of what they do, in the US. You can be a barber and you're a big I'm man. telling you, everyone is proud. Like, it's not ashamed to tell you I'm a barber. Yeah. It's not ashamed to tell you, man, I'm all on. Oh, I'm a nanny. I know I'm a nanny. I'm yeah. so it's like, I don't know whatever jobs people are ashamed of in Cameroon. You can own that job and make it yours in the US. So that's already something that gives people, if you're traveling to the US. My granddad used to tell me something, Kenneth, learn hand work. <laughs> <laughs> As being a man, you have to have something other than education yeah, that you a technical can do. skill. There has to be some kind of technical skill as a man. That's what he used to say to us. Learn because when, when those regular jobs fail you, you can turn to those Then those being acts. a plumber, whatever you're doing in Cameroon, I don't care if you buy and sell them, but whatever you you're can, doing, you can do it there, you do it there, independent. You, still, you still make it. All right, we, we so. have heard from our guest uh, how getting a job in the U.S. can be possible for you if you're dynamic and depending on your long-term, your short-term and long-term goals. 
So uh, let's also, we, we had to do some interviews with Cameroonians out there on the street to find out what they think. Is it, do they believe that it's very easy for them to get a job abroad than in Cameroon? Let's have this Vox Pop and after the break, we'll be right back with you on the show Bush Fuller. Ajouter des, des jeunes qui prennent la route aujourd'hui, c'est parce qu'ils ne trouvent pas les moyens de, de se sentir à l'aise ici au pays. En, en cherchant dans les meilleures conditions de vie, ils sont, de vie, ils sont, ils sont obligés de, de s'expatrier. Je, je pense que si c'est quand les, les jeunes ont un emploi stable, stable ici au Cameroun, la possibilité de, 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 de s'épanouir au, au niveau national, force, euh, fortement. Euh, Forcément, le, la, la possibilité de s'expatrier va, va, va diminuer. I think that a job I got is better than the one at Cameroon about the the income. The, the income that come in is better than the one that they offer in Cameroon. Let me see that. If you see that a person that it's just example now, a person that would do like secretary what I'm doing here, mm? a person that would do it there abroad, just the only the pretty part. It should be better than the one that come home because here that always, oh, the thing that always come up to be cheaper than the one that you are. But there, they already a price and they already put it that you have to do it like that. I'm still your host, Larinette Apaje Abongwa, and I'm still with Kenneth and Lawrence, my guests for today's show on Bush Follower. And with the topic of discussion is employment. And now, Ken, I've worked for a couple of employers. We have problems like late salary pay, the boss gives you work over time, there is no allowance, insurance benefit, health benefit. Is it the same when it comes to working in the or working under somebody in the US. Let's not talk about self-employment because we know all those things. If you're self-employed, it means you, reg you regulate them yourself. Exactly. Let's let's start with you working for somebody in the US. We start with checking, respecting the working hours. I mean, all the stuff. Please they tell call me. It, they call it J-O-B. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Job. <laughs> it means if someone is paying you, he's paying you to do some work for him. There is no laxity, there's no like, you know what, let me take my 30 minutes break or let me just extend this break or did my mom go down drink some wine for <laughs> It will catch up to you, it will catch up to okay. you. You come in, you clock in, you have your time card. Once you're in the job, you're in the job. Whoever is paying you for eight hours expect you to be productive for eight hours. You figure hours away, they will figure, it catches up with you. The system is so... Uh, I don't know, scientific, I don't know what to say. Take for instance, you work in a call center, they expect you to do 200 calls a day. You have to do those 200 calls a day. Uh, Lawrence, you have, you have worked for somebody too, I guess, before, it, without mentioning the name of the company, that's not needed. Okay. How was your work, your working environment like? Well, um... Was it that strict? Because I learned if you're supposed to be in the restaurant for eight hours, I mean, even if they're not customers, well, you have to have something doing. I, I just I, I will uh, try to look at it differently. Um, just spice up. It's not the same everywhere. Yeah. Um, the beginning is always is always hard, but when you get to work with uh, other companies, you have a little a little laxity. Like in my own experience, I ha I, um, I was working with a cable company that allowed me to travel a lot. I was on the field a lot, so you have a uh, you have a certain uh, job description to finish for that day. So you can finish it early and then use some time to maybe do some other okay, things. Okay, it means all boils down to the contract so that you have with the employer from if the you, start. Yeah, your, 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 daily, your, yeah, your daily target is always important. But if you, like in the beginning, if you have, you're talking about flipping burgers, actually working in a restaurant like a McDonald's, like making burger uh, sandwiches. There's another one allowing you in the, in the supermarket, you just have to stand and smile and welcome the guests. Hello, uh, customer service coffee. is very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In the supermarket too, when, it, when you say... Uh, that's the job, they, that's the job that like in the US, you yeah. have like the elderly, that's yeah. the job that they do. Yeah. Their job, oh, they call just, them what yeah, again? Burgers or something like that. Yeah, they, they stand when in, you buy groceries is, and they fill it in the bags just and they welcome, just welcome, welcome and stuff like that. They will be, they have to stand and it's not only particular in the US. Lawrence, there's a lot really that we have to talk about on the show. While uh, Kenneth was talking, something came to my mind, like having looking for a long-term job, 
how do you apply the application process do you ha what are the tips that you need for your cv i mean there's really a lot but if we have to dive into all of those things i'm sure it's going to take us a long time and ladies and gentlemen we might be coming to the end of the show in a few minutes but we are going to uh, have our guest tell us very briefly some of these things now if you want to apply for a job do you do you drop your cv because here in cameroon i'm, I'm taking an example like how it works here what the system where i master you are the ones with the experiences abroad if you're looking for a job you fill an application and you take it to the industry and then they call you back how does it function very briefly uh, uh, the job oh, okay. let, let me yeah, let me oh, let me hear from no. lawrence <laughs> no it, it's basically the same thing like okay. they have here you go to a grocery store you go to a gas station a petrol station you go to um a, a restaurant you ask if they are hiring if they have vacancy, they will tell you yes or no. Then they will hand you the, uh, appli an application to fill up. Okay. You fill your application, you drop it off, and you leave with all your contact information. Okay. If they need you, they will call you. If they don't need you, you will never hear from them. Then you can do that you know, in many different places and get lucky. One, one of them calls you. And it's the basically that. Okay. Um, so if you go a little higher to other jobs, they have a, a, a test for the interview. You have to take that test. So for those who make it on that test, they get interviewed and they get hired. Okay. If you fail that test, you, you fail yourself out. You go look for another job. Okay. So it's different scenarios. Okay, Ken, uh, part-time and full-time job, which one is easier to get in the U.S.? Uh, uh, because I hear, I hear a lot of people no, who say, I have they five part-time jobs in the U.S. No, no, no. The, 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 the job, everyone that has a part-time job has a full-time job. That's why the they call it part-time. The job description in itself will <laughs> tell you if it's a part-time part position or a full-time full -time. position. Okay. It's for you to apply. They will tell you they need this person to do this particular job and this position is a part-time position. But yeah. part-time cannot make you live a life. In, I don't, working part-time would never... See, goes will not back pay to that abuse. orientation <laughs> I was talking you about. From the onset. Because here's the thing that is the most tricky <laughs> part about the U.S. You get caught up without I mean, would you, you have the bills, the landlord on your neck and everything yeah, and everybody's you, just like today, tomorrow you get a job. Ken, I remember the last time you told me that you, you make ten dollars, you have fifty people no, trying to get that. For each dollar you make there are eight people standing trying out to, there, get trying it. to get it. <laughs> there's the insurance guy, there's your there's the, uh, the, your apartment, there's this, there is that the bills that you have to right. pay. Right. Trust me, those people want their money and you must pay them. So it goes back to that orientation of trying to say. Most people get caught up with the lifestyle. You get to the US, you start accumulating bills. What do you do? You get a car. You get car note. What do you do? You get you want your own apartment. <laughs> you get rent. That's right. Yeah, you, you get all oh, you, you know you go riding. <laughs> and then yes, the thing is the most difficult part about it. It is a class society, which means the moment you buy, first thing you go is I just want a car. Right. From point A to B. You get a even, car. You don't even need money to do that. Within a month. What do you do? Like, man, this car, I want something. Something bigger, yeah. you know? This apartment, maybe I want to move out of this neighborhood. Uh, this area, there's a lot of thieves in this. Maybe Cameroonians and all of us, that's the area. Yeah. It's oh, always <laughs> something challenging. And once you get caught up in it. In the competition. Then yeah. you get caught up. It comes back to the jobs. That's what I'm saying. You have to look for something in the long term that is stable. So, and please don't forget, don't forget the very beautiful pictures that you have to snap and send back home for people to know that <laughs> hey, it's doing that, great for Larry. Is it <laughs> packaging yeah, and branding? Yeah, but let me say, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the program is so interesting with my two guests here, Kenneth and Lawrence. But uh, we'll be giving uh, giving them some more opportunity to give us very quick advice and quick notes before we come to the end of the program. But just before that, let's have this transition of a sports of a number one partner of the show, Global Bush. We'll be right back. Looking for the best holiday? Well, look no further. Global Bush Travel and Tourism Agency offers unique tour experiences in the most exciting locations in Cameroon. The services include visa processing, Flight reservation, ticket sales, as well as store services. Global Bush Travel and Tourism Agency works in collaboration with several hotels across Cameroon and Africa, as well as major airlines such as Ethiopian Airlines, South African Airlines, Air France, Turkish Airlines, just to name a few. Their long standing experience with local hotels, snacks, restaurants, and resorts means you can enjoy excellent services at a great discount. 
Global Bushi Smart, kind and welcoming staff are always ready to give you the best value for your money. With more than 10 years in the tourism industry, their tour guides and personnel not only master the trade, but know exactly when and how to give you the best of your business experience. They are brought down based on high profile individuals, businessmen, and diplomatic missions are a testament to their great services. To find out more about Global Bush, please visit their website at www.globalbushtravelandtourismagency.com. Global Bush Travel and Tourism Agency, your gateway to Africa. Thank you very much. We are drawing close to the end of the program and we are still with our guest uh, Kenneth and Lawrence. We have spoken. It sounds so appetizing to just leave Cameroon and travel to the US because we have talked about how easy it is to get a job, how good it is to establish, how good the pay is, how wonderful everything is. But it can be that good. Trust it can be that good. Please, <laughs> could you tell us the cautions that we have to take? Let me, let me, let me. Okay, let I'll start, me, with, yeah, start yeah, with you. Let, let me take that because I have something I don't want it to. to <laughs> it shouldn't. Um, the thing, I mean, we talk from personal experiences. The thing that most people have to be careful with is who you stay with when you get there. They have about 90% influence on what you become in America or any other country for that matter. Who you live with. They will condition your mind to their own either aspiration or limitations or whatever they do. They will or the act kind of job opportunities that they job. have. And if you get caught up in that, you either probably, if you live with a very successful uh, somebody who excels, it might work for you. If you live with somebody who's been there 25 years and then all their life is driving taxi, you probably end up thinking that that's the best way to live. It's up to you. But what I always tell people is, Think outside that home. Think outside the box. Don't get caught up in that. You know, think for yourself. Okay. Because some people can either take you up or bring you down. Okay. You have your own. It can either be low or high. above your expectation. Yeah, you have your, You believe in yourself. You know why you got there. So don't let nobody condition your mind on a particular thing. If you live in a home where the husband and the wife is a nurse, and they tell you nurses, nursing is the best thing to do, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Go and find out what it takes to be probably uh, an engineer or a camera engineer or a plumber, or like a plumber or a work for yourself. You know, become uh, a business owner. Take your advice with all, all respect, and then think outside that and see what else you can be. A, you can be. Uh, you can have some talent. You can be a dancer in Cameroon. You don't have to go there and uh, work in a restaurant. You can find out where they do training on dancing and become right. a professional dancer, and right. that can work for you too. You don't have to always like look for manual job. You can excel in your talent. You can be a singer, a dancer, or a carpenter. Okay. You don't have to follow the the advice on particular people. I that think that's very crucial. Okay. That's that's the uh, advice <laughs> that I can give to my people. Uh, <laughs> like you don't want to say more. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, very, he's very right. Absolutely, very right about what he's saying. To add to that, to me, you have to have a plan. Okay. Okay. You have to have a plan if you're going to the U.S. You know, for two years, this is what I'm going to be doing. For three years, this is what I'm going to be doing. But we're missing out on something. Most people go without the uh, the appropriate visas. So status is something that all this, you can have all these dreams and all these aspirations that we're talking about, okay? If you're not legal, all those there's no way you, you you have to start fighting with immigration. You, you fighting with the police, or you're afraid to go work here because you'll be locked up for this reason, or this is that. You need to have a plan for those, and take this is just an example for people who went to the US, they have your, uh, let's say someone who won the DV, DV they the necessary uh, papers, is as legal as it gets in the US. You have to have a plan, a short term plan. What will help you and your family, feed your family, you have to have a long term plan. Long -term That's that plan that makes you buy that house up in the hills. You know. I, th I think I think me, you have you have to have a plan and you have to stick to that plan. I think you both have just nailed it because 
every other thing we have discussed makes no sense when you go to the u.s and you're in hiding how do you get the job how do you go looking for the job so ken i really want to thank you so much on behalf of the entire crew of travel tv as well as you uh, uh, lawrence you have it has really been a very enriching program and i'm hoping that the pe persons watching this program you will hear the information and you not keep it to yourself it's very important on travel tv we travel without borders but we travel the right way how do you get to the u.s illegally traveling through the desert where the risk of losing your life is there that's not what we are we are encouraging what we are doing is we are discouraging uh, illegal we are discouraging illegal migration and encouraging legal migration so travel without borders yes let your wings spread and you can fly as much as you can but make sure that you're doing it the right way so that you go get your dream job if you think the usa is a place where you want to settle if it's belgium so today our focus we have been discussing more about the united states of america because both guests have had traveling experience in the u.s but it could be same for any other country it could be belgium it could be Germany, it could be Italy, it could be Ghana, it could be Zimbabwe, it could be Croatia, it could be whatever country, whatever continent. Make sure when you want to travel, if it's for a job opportunity, do it the right way and get the right jobs. And we also promote, I like the idea you gave, self-employment. Never also think that when you go out there, you must work for somebody. There are so many things that you can do. We have Cameroonians who are hairdressers, who are plumbers. If you go to the USA or you go to any other country, Think of how you can use your talent, your skills to establish something for yourself. I've been your host, Larry Netapaje, and with my guest, Kenneth and Lawrence, we say thank you for being with us throughout this second edition of our program, Bush Fuller. And please, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It's Travel TV Channel. And if you're watching us on our main page, which is our website, our TV channel, www.tvtravelchannel.com. Follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, and all our social media pages. Thank Thank you so much for watching next time will be another time with you bye bye thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe like comment share and click on the bell icon to get notification on our latest updates